No, come closer, the audio is going to be sh Welcome to the, I don't know how many episode of turbocharging my K11 Nissan Micra. As you can see, we've done the turbo pipes in the last episode. And today, we're going to be fitting bigger injectors because the stock ones can't keep up with how much fuel the engine needs. We also have the boost and oil pressure gauges that we're going to install later in the video. But we're going to start with the fuel system because like, I just want to. So obviously we've got to remove the stock injectors. Um, I haven't ran the car in a few days, so I really hope there's no fuel pressure because I once took the fuel lines off while there was fuel pressure and it didn't end well. We're gonna start by removing this, although we just fitted it, and then that's gonna give us access to the injectors. Nice. The O-rings on these original ones are absolutely horrible. These ones, it'll do. Right, those are out. Time for these ones to pop back in. So let's go ahead and do that. And, oh, f I think, I think that's gonna work. I, I hope so. I wouldn't be surprised if we go to start the car and the, there's just fuel like leaking everywhere. So all the connectors are back in place, but while we have all of this taken apart, I'm going to use some of this. Uh, this is some heat reflective tape, which is going to reflect heat. It is going to help lower the intake temperatures because these will be reflecting heat because uh, the heat reflective tape and then uh, the heat will be reflected and these will stay colder which is good So that's the first one done, it looks really cool. Gotta do the small one which is down here. Wait, I'm gonna... Wait no. Where is it? Oh, it's here. Hello. The little pipe there. Nice. Nice. That looks very, very nice. Now, I do need to make some bracket for this, but I'm not too worried about that uh, for now. Uh, injectors are in, that's done, time to move on to the fuel pump. So, we're gonna open up this little thing here for the fuel pump. And what we're putting in is a Walbro 255, I think. I kind of forgot what I bought. Uh, but that's this thing right here. That's nice, that's nice. Watch the car not start after we do all of this. And which one's which, I already forgot. Nice! Nice! I have no idea what I'm doing. I have to pop this open. And there is the stock fuel pump. And all its... Oh my... Do you remember when I was trying to turn this car on and it wasn't turning on because there was no fuel in it? We have absolutely destroyed this. Oh! Do you see all those metal shavings in there? That is not good. <laughs> Alright. So we've transferred everything onto the new fuel pump. So now let's go ahead and put it in the car. This is just gonna slide back onto so it's set like a rails on the bottom of the fuel tank. Just gotta line it up and then we pull it back and it should sit in place. So everything is back together, new fuel pump in the uh, fuel tank. I'm just gonna take this fuel pipe off because there was some miscellaneous liquid in the wall row pump, which I don't think is good for the engine. So I'm just gonna run the pump a bit, uh, drain some petrol out of the lines, make sure there is petrol in the lines, and then we're gonna hook it up and start the engine. And I still, I'm still un incapable of taking this clip off. I don't, it's actually taken like 20 seconds. So what I'm gonna do now is I got the laptop here and I'm gonna put the fuel pump priming time to like six seconds, something like crazy long, just to flow fuel through the lines and make sure everything's uh, good. Uh, I've taken the fuel line off there. So.
The fuel pump and the injectors have been fitted to the car and after changing this value right here for the injector flow, the car runs fairly good. So the original injectors were 149 cc's per minute, the new ones are 216, that's been changed and the car idles and runs fine. The AFR is the same now that the tune knows what injectors the car has. I did some testing and this is good, this hasn't happened before, so the injectors and the fuel pump have fixed the issue we had it's still cutting power every now and then because the tune is not very good i'm just guessing all the values for ve spark timing afr so it definitely needs a lot of work so for now let's worry about the next thing we wanted to do which are the gauges here along the a pillar this is the afr gauge which i've had for a long time ever since i made the manifold uh, but here we have the oil pressure gauge and the boost pressure gauge the gauges came with some brackets, but they didn't look like this out of the box. I made some modifications to them, and the plan is to drill a hole for every gauge in this A-pillar plastic trim, screw that in there, and then have the gauges somewhat like that. We're going to make some sort of housing for all those gauges once we have them set up in place. I've marked all the spots where I actually want to drill into the plastic. I have drilled said spots. And now we have all the three gauges mounted on the inside of the A-pillar. Next up, it's time to wire them in. So this right here is all the wiring for the gauges. It may look a bit complicated, but it's actually very straightforward. So each gauge has an orange, a red, a white, and a black cable. And the oil pressure gauge has an extra green cable. That is for the signal. Now, as for the other cables, the red and white one both go to 12 volt accessory. The black one is obviously a ground and the orange one goes to a 12 volt headlight switch. So when you turn on the headlights, uh, there's a 12 volt signal sent through that orange cable to these and they go from being white to being amber if you wire them up that way which is the way I want to wire them up so basically they go to a softer dimmer color when it's dark and you turn on the headlights a good bit of progress later we have all the four wires that need to go to a 12 volt accessory going to a 12 volt accessory right here so when I flick down this switch here the gauges turn on and light up the grounding wires are connected into one cable that runs here and grounds onto that bolt. The orange cables for the headlight switch are connected into one wire going down through the dash and I've tapped them into that blue red cable with the gray dots. So when I turn on the headlights, 12 volt signal gets sent through that and they go from being white to being amber. The vacuum line for the boost gauge, I've ran it down underneath the dash and tapped it into the map line for the ECU. So now that gauge is also gonna act as a vacuum gauge and a boost gauge depending on how open the throttle is. So basically all of that is done. The only thing left is the cable for the oil pressure sensor, which I've ran down through the dash and I need to connect to the oil pressure sensor, which is not installed yet. But I've ran the cable all the way into the engine bay right here and I'm gonna connect it to this. But first we need to install it. And to do that, I need to get under the car. I am now under the car and I don't think it's going to be as easy as I thought it'd be. So the oil pressure sensor is over the oil filter and I actually can't really reach it. Like I can't even disconnect that little clip. Plus I don't think there's enough space between that hole there and the oil filter. So we're going to need some sort of adapter. About a week later, I've got these things right here. So for these little extensions and one of these three-way splitters, the thread of the new filter and the old filter is the same, but there's no way it's gonna fit in the original position. So these uh, extensions will go like that. This will fit out of the way and it'll also be able to keep the stock sensor which means there will be no warning lights on the dash, which is really good. I've also got a new oil filter because this current one needs to come off for this to be fitted. A good while later, here we have the sensor installed using those adapters. The original sensor is still there. I just got to throw a new oil filter onto it, top of the oil, and turn on the engine. Here with the gauges, with the engine on, we can see that we have about 6 bar of oil pressure. Obviously, if I rev up the engine, right, it goes up, it goes to 7, and it's definitely going past 7. So, hopefully that doesn't damage the sensor but I am happy to know that there is oil pressure. If there won't be oil pressure, I will stop the engine. So that is why I really wanted to have this. After all the work I've done on the engine, I wouldn't be surprised if something went wrong.
the oil sensor is installed in the car and that is all done now lastly these right here uh, well this and those two there are the gauge pods i'll be using i've made a few designs prototyped a few things and i've settled with this nothing too fancy fairly simple uh, just a gauge pod and then a little clip here two bolts so we can pivot there and i can make some adjustments that is going to go in the a pillar the plastic trim of the a pillar right here i'll be able to adjust it like this and like that have a point to the driver and i'll probably just run the cables i'll tidy up those holes it's not going to be extremely neat but i'm not too picky so let's go ahead and install these along with the gauges and finish it all up so there we have it they are done and i'm very happy with the result if i haven't made it clear there's some 3d prints which i've designed they're not amazing but they're a nice simple reliable solution to what i was trying to do and with all of that done, I think that brings this video to an end. We've installed the bigger injectors, the high pressure fuel pump, the sensors and the gauges got them working. And lastly, as you've just seen, the gauge pods are done. Thank you very much for watching this far. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We're actually very close to getting this thing finally officially on the road. I recently got my driver's license, which I'm super happy about. Um, if you thought I was like 25, I'm actually only 17. So I'm really looking forward to getting this thing on the road and driving it. I just need to figure out a few legal and also mechanical things. Um, one of them being what you're going to see in the next video, polyurethane engine mounts, which we're going to make ourselves. So DIY poly engine mounts, uh, because at the moment, if you take a closer look, there are no engine mounts in the car, which is not ideal to say the least. So you can expect that very soon, hopefully. And with all of that being said, I'll see you in the next one. And with that done, <laughs> I think that brings the video to the end. The bigger injectors have been fitted along with a new fuel pump <laughs> and the sensors are also in and working fine. The car runs fine for now. Obviously, you will still need a good bit of tuning. <laughs> Lastly, the gauge pods are done and installed. <laughs> All the bigger injectors, the high pressure fuel pump. We've installed the sensors and gauges. Um... <laughs> <laughs>